Hello, and welcome to the Law School Application Process Essentials, What You Need to Know webinar. I'm Nicole Vilches, Assistant Dean for Admissions. And I'm Gabriela Amador, Director of Admissions. We appreciate you joining us. This webinar is designed to provide you with information about the law school application process to help you put together a strong application package. We'll begin with an overview of the process and then provide guidance on each individual component. We'll also provide you with our top tips for putting together a strong application. Gabby and I have each reviewed thousands of applications during our admissions careers, and we've mined our collective experience to highlight ways that you can make your application stand out. We hope this information will be useful for you as you prepare your law school applications. So begin with an overview of the application process. The process is facilitated through the services available through the Law School Admissions Council or LSAC. You can create a list of schools that interest you. You can register for the Law School Admissions Test or LSAT. You can sign up for the Credential Assembly Service or CAS and you can complete and submit your applications. And you visit lsac.org to create an account and learn more about each of these services. Now we'll go through the basic components of the application process. Um, you'll submit your application form. Uh, each of the law schools that you're applying to will have an application form available through lsac.org, so you can complete your forms there. Uh, you'll submit your LSAT score, and at some schools, GRE scores may be accepted as an alternative to the LSAT. You'll submit your undergraduate and graduate transcripts, and these are sent through the LSAC Credential Assembly Service. You'll submit a personal statement, one or more letters of recommendation, and you may have the opportunity to conduct an admissions interview, but you should be aware that interviews are not offered at most law schools, so generally you'll be conducting your admissions process through the materials you submit in conjunction with your application. Application deadlines. Typically, you'll want to begin your application process 9 to 12 months before you plan to begin law school. The application deadlines are different at each school, so be sure to check with individual school requirements. The deadlines may be absolute or flexible, and it's generally considered better to apply as early as possible. Uh, for fall admission, deadlines are generally between February and April. Now, the application form, as I mentioned, these are uh, generally available through lsac.org, and you can complete them and upload your materials there. Um, and you want to make sure that you carefully read and fully answer all of the questions on each application. You'll find many similarities between law school applications, but there can also be important differences. So you want to make sure that you're carefully reading the form to catch those differences. On each application, you'll also answer a series of what are known as character and fitness questions. Uh, these are questions that ask about past criminal um, convictions or misconduct, um, disciplinary action while you were an undergraduate or graduate student. The questions will vary from application to application, and sometimes the differences between questions can be very subtle. So you want to make sure you read these very carefully. You want to fully disclose all information if you have to answer yes, and include a detailed narrative description. It's also helpful to discuss how you've changed as a result of the incident, and if you're unsure if you need to answer yes to a question, call the school for clarification. It's better to disclose too much information than to omit information. When you go to register for the bar exam and go through the character and fitness review process, you'll need to provide all of this information and more to the bar examiners. And they will check to make sure that the information that you provide to them matches what's on your law school application. And it can create some serious problems for you if that information does not match. You also want to make sure to double check your application before submission. Did you answer all the required questions? Did you attach the correct personal statement? And you would be surprised how often applicants attach the wrong statement and then need to supplement it with a corrected statement. You also want to carefully proofread all of your materials and make sure that you've answered and provided all of the correct information to the school. The law school admission test. The LSAT is generally required for admission to all ABA-approved law schools. 
<clears throat> the test is offered multiple times each admission cycle. For the 2018-19 cycle, the exam is offered six times, and you'll see the dates listed on your screen. For the 2019-2020 cycle, the exam is offered nine times, and those dates are also listed on your screen. Uh, beginning in 2019, the LSAT will go digital. And be sure to check the score release date for the exam you plan to take to make sure that your score will be available with sufficient time to meet the application deadlines. You'll want to plan to take the test uh, on one of the early dates, if at all possible. And the reason for doing so is there may be an instance where you may not uh, take the test because you became ill or you had to miss this test for some reason. So uh, scheduling the test early gives you an opportunity to retake it if you may need to. Uh, in terms of multiple scores, for statistical purposes, all schools must use the high score. Uh, for admission purposes, some schools use the average while others use the high score. So you'll want to check with each school and consider including an addendum if your score improves significantly. Um, we'll su we suggest that you only retake the LSAT if you are fairly certain that your score will improve. Now, some law schools have begun to accept the GRE general test as an alternative to the uh, LSAT. Um, Chicago Kent is one of the law schools that accepts GRE scores, uh, but it is still a limited number of law schools that are accepting GRE scores. So you want to check with the schools that you're considering before deciding which exam to take. And if you are planning to apply to a wide variety of schools, the LSAT is still the most commonly accepted test. The GRE is an exam administered by ETS. And it measures verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, and analytical writing. The score reporting requirements will vary by law school. Um, and as I said, only a limited number of law schools are currently accepting GRE scores. So you do want to be sure to check individual policies and requirements. Um, for the schools that accept GRE scores, some may allow you to submit only your highest score, while others may require you to submit all exams taken within the past five years. If you've taken both the LSAT and the GRE, it's important to be aware that you must still submit your LSAT score. That's considered the primary test for admissions purposes. Law schools are still required to report that score to the American Bar Association when we complete our accreditation reports each year. And that's the score that will be factored into our admission statistics uh, if you have an LSAT score. So uh, just be aware you will need to still submit that score even if you do take the GRE. And applicants who are applying with only a GRE score must still register with the LSAC Credential Assembly Service. So you'll send all of your undergraduate and graduate transcripts to CAS, and you can also submit your, your letters of recommendation through CAS if you choose to do so. Undergraduate transcript and GPA. When you're applying to law school, law schools will be thoroughly examining your transcripts for evidence that you've mastered the skills required in law school. Uh, do your grades show a, a trend of improvement or decline? If your grades are a decline or you have a weak semester or a weak course, you may want to consider addressing weaknesses in an addendum. Graduate coursework and degrees will help strengthen your application, um, especially if uh, you've done well in the graduate program. And your transcripts must be sent through the LSAC Credential Assembly Service, or CAS. So remember to send every transcript to CAS, even if you've transferred the course to another institution. And internationally educated applicants can have a foreign credential evaluation done through CAS. Your personal statement plays an important role in the admissions process, and it's used in several different ways. Uh, you can consider it your interview opportunity with the admissions committee, because at most law schools, you don't have the opportunity to go in for an in-person admissions interview. So this is your chance to share with the committee anything you'd like them to know about you. 
Your personal statement also provides additional information about your candidacy beyond the facts already presented in your application and beyond those that the law school has asked you as part of the application process. And the personal statement also serves as a writing sample and it should be an example of your best work. So you wanna make sure that you've carefully proofread it, that you've double checked the grammar and that the personal statement is really highlighting uh, who you are and what your strengths are. Personal statement provides one of the best opportunities to really make your application stand out. You can use it to describe what makes you interesting and distinctive. You can highlight how you will enrich the diversity of the student body through your unique life experience, ambitions, background, and interests. And you can highlight the qualities that you believe make you a strong candidate for admission. Now you may find at some of the law schools that you're applying to, you'll have a specific question that you need to write on for your personal statement. And if you do, you absolutely want to make sure that you're answering that question. But at other schools, you'll find that the personal statement is open-ended and that's how the statement is at Chicago Kent. So we leave it up to you to decide what you'd like to share with, share with us in the statement. So as a general guideline, uh, it can be about two to three pages double spaced. Um, but you can really use it to share anything you think is important for the admissions committee to know about you. Uh, letters of recommendation. The number required varies for each school. So be sure to check with each school um, to ask what is the minimum and what is the maximum numbers of letter, uh, letters of recommendation required. And LSAC will accept letters and mail them with your Credential Assembly Service Report. You must designate in your LSAC account which letters should be sent to each school. Now the most helpful letters are those written by a professor or someone who has worked with you in an academic capacity. For students who have been out of school, recommendations from employers or colleagues are acceptable. Recommendations should address your intellectual abilities and academic strengths rather than your personal characteristics. You may want to consider meeting with your recommender to discuss your law school plans and your career goals. And doing so will allow your recommender to really tailor their letter recommendation. Now, some law schools, you may have the opportunity to submit addenda to your application and or uh, one or more optional essays. So if you can submit an addendum, um, this is a chance for you to anticipate questions that the admissions committee may have about your application and address those for the committee. So perhaps you had a rocky patch during undergrad. This is a chance to explain that to the committee, to explain what happened, how you've changed to highlight some of the grades later on that where you did better in your courses. Or perhaps you took the LSAT the first time and were not prepared or you were ill. The second time you took it, you did much better. This is a chance to let the committee know what happened so we have more confidence that that higher score is most representative of how you perform on the test. So think about where the committee might have questions and where providing useful information would be helpful for the committee. You may also have the option to submit an optional essay. So sometimes the school you're applying to may have some additional questions you can answer through an optional essay. Um, at Chicago Kent, we invite you to submit an optional essay where you discuss the factors that are prompting your application. So this is a chance to let us know about some of the programs and initiatives and activities going on at the school that are most of interest to you and how those fit with your career goals. Here we'll provide you with tips to help you, your application stand out. So our first tip is apply as early as possible. Uh, don't wait until the deadline when the pool is larger and many offers of admission have already been made. Uh, the uh, admission to law school generally does become more competitive later in a cycle, so it is a good idea to apply as early as possible. It's also helpful to pretend you're a member of the admissions committee. So try to imagine you know nothing about yourself, read your full application package, and then think, what questions would you have after reviewing your application? Does your application provide a complete picture of who you are and what you offer as a potential law school candidate? If not, take this opportunity, go back, revise some of the parts of your application, or add supplemental information to help give the committee a more complete understanding of who you are as a candidate for admission. The next tip is uh, choose your recommenders wisely. 
Uh, do they know you well? Will they provide the committee with meaningful insight into your candidacy? Be strategic about who you ask for a recommendation. This is an important part, especially uh, if you are only submitting one or two letters of recommendation. You really want to take the time to uh, give your recommender as much time as possible to write your letter of recommendation and then again to meet with them and go over um, some, of the, some of the ways you'll be presenting yourself in your law school application uh, so that you can have a strongly written letter of recommendation. The next tip is to highlight your unique interests and the special qualities that make you, you. So we're interested in recruiting students to our schools from a wide variety of backgrounds with diverse interests. And so we're interested in some of the things that you're passionate about, that you're interested in doing, whether or, those, whether or not those actually have any direct applicability to what we'll be doing in law school. So do you speak several languages? Do you love to run marathons? Do you spend your weekends painting, dancing, or playing music? What are those special things that are important to you that you'd like to share with the committee? And you'll want to find ways to demonstrate your strong interest in the school. So writing an optional essay or, use, or using part of your personal statement to describe why you have chosen to apply with specific well-researched examples. Take the time to get to know the school through a campus visit, attending an admissions event, or meeting with an admissions counselor. Um, if you're able to write a thank you note after a visit, while it's not necessary, it is a nice touch. Write a letter of continued interest if you're still waiting to hear from a school that you are interested in attending. And then finally, uh, be deliberate in what you submit and don't overdo it. So you want each piece and component of your application package to add some value and to help give the committee a fuller understanding of who you are as a candidate. But you don't want to submit so much information that you leave the committee wondering why you've chosen to add that information. Each piece should be strategic, it should add value, should help us to better understand you as a candidate for admission. So we'd like to thank you for attending the webinar. Uh, we hope this information has been useful and that it will help you as you begin to put your law school applications together. We realize that you may have some questions remaining and we're happy to answer those for you. You can contact us at admissions at kentlaw.iit.edu or you can contact the Office of Admissions at 312-906-5020. We're happy to answer your questions. We can also set up an appointment with an admissions counselor for you or schedule a visit to Chicago Kent. So we wish you all the best with the admissions process and uh, we look forward to you applying. Thank you.